Hey guys, I'm Jace. Welcome back to Farmstead Forge. Today I thought I would do a very back to the basics video. I'm going to show you how you can isolate material to forge like a tenon or some balls if you don't have a guillotine. So obviously this guillotine does not fit in this anvil. None of my shop stuff fit in this old anvil and whoever punched the holes in this thing were drunk because the fritzel holes going that way, the hardy's going that way. So this is just my barn anvil. But Let's get started on how we're going to do this. I just got a chunk of half inch square bar and I'll probably cut this in half so if I screw it up we have an extra piece to work with. Most of you guys know with uh, the shop remodel I don't have power so I've been using the heck out of my DeWalt battery powered angle grinder. I've had this thing for like 12 years or so and um, I'm not endorsed by DeWalt or anything. I just like DeWalt because I can find any of their stuff in any of the stores. If you guys have an interest in getting one of these you don't have power I'll throw a link down below and you can check them out. First of all, I'll probably do a tenon in first, and I'm just gonna mark, say like a half an inch or so from the edge, and you wouldn't have to do this. It just kind of keeps your keeps you on the straight and narrow. A friend of mine. Dad passed away and gave me a whole set of these handy little squares. They're pretty awesome. Just take a cold chisel, do a little tappy tappy. Just so it gives you a line to follow when you come out of the forge. First option for fullering is we're going to use just a, this is some 3 8 round stock that I bent in kind of an S so you have a spot for this end to sit. One of these ways it sits better on my anvil. So it rests it in a rounded punch to follow your line and that's what will start. Also if you don't trust it sitting there, um, this is just an old chain link on my tongs. You can make, you know, rain rings or whatever, but that just holds it solid. That allows me to set it on my anvil, hold it with my legs. This punch is major overkill for this, but it was just a quickie project. Get one more heat in that and straighten it all back out.
rain ring are kind of nice because you can hold that and go corner to corner. Now that I have a nice shoulder established all the way around there, we're going to round this up into a tenon. We don't want to get it too small through there or we'll get too small for our hole that we have. And just come in and knock our corners off. Nice shoulder established. It's gonna clench almost down to it. And it's, it's not perfect, but you can see where you have a perfectly usable tenon now. You can rivet that up. If you want to. It's a simple way to forge one. I'm working on the offside of my handle right now, but another good exercise in hammer control. You want to go at about a 45. Let your animal do part of the work. You do the other half with the cross peen. you get a nice line established, throw good heat in it, and then we can start knocking corners off. Get a little softer cross peen. Knock my corners off.
Sit on here at 45. Drive that corner down. Remember, you want a really nice, round, soft edge of your anvil. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this back to the basics video. I could, I could have put a little more time into my ball and made it more symmetrical. And I could have taken a file and cleaned up my tenon end a little bit. But at the end of the day, this is just a demonstration and this piece will just go in the trash probably. But I hope you found a nugget in there you can use. If you don't have a guillotine and you just want to do a quick little project, you can do it. If you did enjoy the video and you'd like to check out more of my Back to the Basic videos, you can check out this playlist right up here. Or is it down here? One of the places. Anyway, and uh, yeah, I'd appreciate the subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. If I can get it to work. <laughs>